One of the best tools I've come across which uh, help you to identify the inherent risk in all of the deals in your pipeline is the ANSOF New Business Risk Analysis Matrix. Created by a guru of marketing and sales planning, Igor Ansoff, through the 50s through the 70s in the Rand Business School in the States. What Ansoff said is that there are four types of new business you're going to come across. I've amended this slightly to take it from the marketing perspective where Ansoff worked into a pure sales delivery pipeline analysis. So we use Ansoff's risk factors, we use Ansoff's four quadrants, but we just tweak it slightly to make it appropriate for today's sales pipeline analysis. The first thing he says is, you've got four types of new business. Not everyone sees it like this, but there are four types. The first one is, we have existing customers who buy existing products from us. Every now and again we have to go to these people and we have to sell them more of an existing product. For example, last year someone bought 10 units from us, this year they're going to buy the same 10 units. Is that new business or is that existing business? I think it's an existing customer and we're selling them more of an existing product. It's new business. You didn't have it before, so we're going to go for it now. What Ansoff says is box number one, the easiest type of new business, still carries a risk. And the risk in itself is almost binary. What Ansoff says is that you have a one in two chance of winning this. So plainly put, you will either win the extra 10 units or you won't. That's it. But it's still more of an existing product to an existing customer. If you didn't have the business before, you're going to get it now. Box number one. Box number two is a variation on this. And box number two is where you go to exactly the same existing customer and the same decision making unit that you're dealing with and you sell them a new product. Now there's two types of new product. The first one is a product that this existing customer buys from a competitor of yours. So here, an existing product, existing customer, he's been buying product A from us for 10 years. 10 units a year, every year. What he does here is he buys product B from a competitor. We sell product B, so we would like him to buy product B from us. That's a new product to an existing customer. Then what we have is we have another type of new product. This is a new product that this customer has never bought from anyone before, because maybe we've just invented it. So it's a brand new product, and it is a product X. No one has sold this before, we've just invented it, we are unique. But when we take it to our existing customer, it's still a new product. What Ansoff says is, when you move across here, because of the competitive nature here, and because of the new relationship of the customer with the product, the risk factor goes up. And he says the risk factor in box number two goes up to one in three. Then we drop down to a very interesting area. Now this is where a lot of your gap identifying activity is going to be, and a lot of your winning new business in the new pipeline area. And this is where we're gonna take our shrink-wrapped vanilla products off the shelf, highly referenced, well used, well understood by the marketplace, but we're gonna take it to a new customer. Now there are two types of new customer. There is another division of an existing customer, which is a new customer, or there is a brand new customer that we've never worked with before. So we have existing customer Y, and then we have Y1, a new department in our existing customer Y. Then what we have, we have a brand new customer, ZZZ, and ZZZ, a company we've never dealt with before, and they are now going to buy our shrink wrap product, no amendments, straight off the shelf. What Ansoff says, when we get down here to box number three, that your risk starts to rocket, because these people don't know you, they don't actually know how to engage with you, and the relationship with you, not the product, but the relationship with you, rockets the risk, and it goes up to one in five. Now finally, although Ansoff was a physicist and a mathematician, 
this isn't rocket science. At this point, we move into box number four. And box number four says, we're gonna take a new product to a new customer with all its variations. At this point, what he says is, now you've got a bigger risk because there are so many variables involved in here. New people, new contracts, new relationships, proof of concept of the product, return on investment analysis, value proposition development, all of this is such a turmoil. What Ansoff says here is that in box number four, you are working on probably greater than one in 10. And if you think that this is a difficult one, just think to something like a mail shot or a new marketing campaign. And you've got a new product that no one has ever heard of before, and you're gonna send it to someone's front door, someone who's never bought from you before. One in 10, I think that's tight. You could be even be working on one in a thousand, and in some cases, one in 10,000. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves, let's not get upset with this. One in 10, nice model risk factor, and still it can be quite scary. Now, finally, why do people use this? People use it with three things in mind. Number one, when I analyze my pipeline, the whole of my pipeline, and I take each deal and put it in one of these boxes, I will divide the total value of each deal by the Ansoff risk factor. This gives me a sales assurance figure of what we should be returning on a probability. So we're risk analyzing each single deal. Then we add all the deals up with the post Ansoff factor, the divided factor, and usually that gives us the gap. It tells us where we are gonna miss our target this year. Second thing it does, it helps you to create the priorities of which deals you should be working on and what resources you should allocate to which deal. And then finally what it does is it allows a management conversation that says we can quantify the risk, we can minimize the risk, we can plan to avoid the risk if possible, and ultimately we can avoid any scabby dog deals or non-sales target achievement. Thank you.